Got them back. Oh, blueies. I almost forgot. Actually, Alan Swain sent me a message. Don't forget your glasses. But Lauren had literally just handed them to me. I would have forgot otherwise. It wasn't for Lauren and Alan. So, just on my way back to Ontario from uh, Ohio. Bit of a rough morning this morning. I guess not a rough morning. Um, went to bed last night. It was pouring rain at 12.30, quarter to one, pouring rain in Ohio, about to switch to snow and then freeze immediately. And everybody was upset at the track today because, you know, the track wasn't in great shape. I, you know, Lauren's telling me the guys are saying it's too icy. And um, I knew that the track crew themselves, just because of the weather we've had the Watch last out two. vehicle on shoulder ahead. Thank you, Waze. Um, um, the track crew is pretty stressed out at Northfield Park, and I think I don't think people realize one, it's an absolutely thankless job being in the track crew, and two, it's not easy. You know, think of it: it's pouring rain at 1:30, 1 o'clock in the morning. It switches to snow, then it switches to ice. So realistically, in a perfect world, you would be on the track around 3, 3:30 in the morning to make sure that it was freeze drying and you were cutting it nicely. That's impossible. It's not like these guys live in a tent in the maintenance shack. So it wasn't that shocking when I woke up to reports that it was icy. I got to... <laughs> so I knew, like, the track crew. I met them. They seemed like nice people. Um, and, and stressed out. So I went and I got Dunkin' Donuts for the track crew. There's two or three guys in the maintenance shop. Uh, really nice people. So I went and got them, you know, coffee and donuts. So I pull up to the maintenance shop, which is right at the track. Now, I just finished talk, talking to Lauren, and she said the guy said they don't know if they can jog. I'm going to tell you one thing. They got it pretty good here in Ohio because that track was better today than it is most days at Tomiko just because of the weather we've had in Ontario. So I sent her a message. I said, I'm literally looking at the track. Tell them to get on the track. Right Now, they had already started jogging. I pull in and Timmy says, oh, you know, I don't know if we can, if we can train. Out. Out train. We'll be just fine. Um, you know, especially the Dell horses. So Dell Cash, Dell Breeze. You guys haven't really truly met them yet. Dell Cash, Dell Breeze, and Gemstone Ruby Rose. Uh, uh, that's a great story. I'll get to that in just a second. I said they're training. Now we're up against the clock. Now, because I've drug my feet and taken my time, and I, you know, once in a while it's nice to have a morning just to sleep in and be left alone. Especially is nothing I hate more. You know how much I hate the rain. And that was the, it wasn't the worst weather. It was close to it. You know, where that freezing rain, it feels like it's minus 10,000, but somehow it's still raining. That weather's the worst weather on earth. Last night was just annoying. And then Voyage of Ice and Fire put in okay effort. So now I'm kind of annoyed. You know, get home. I had a shower at 1245 because the, the mud somehow finds its way to the back of your eyeballs and is itching at your brain. So I had a, a shower at 1245 and get up at like 830 drug my feed. I wanted to start working on the sets for Saturday for the drone. Told Lauren I would get there, go first trip with uh, Twinby Habanero. We'll train the three Dell horses, or the two Dell horses and Gemstone Ruby Rose by themselves. I want to get a look at Ruby Rose. I hadn't trained her since she tried to take my head off when I was cutting her hair. So uh, I want to get a look at her. Gemstone Ruby Rose, not a bad trotting mare. Not a bad trotting filly, a three-year-old filly, Ohio bred trotter. There's going to be a lot of people maybe after this video asking about these horses. One is an Indiana bred pacer, three-year-old. The other one's an Ohio bred pacer, three-year-old. The other one is a uh, three-year-old Ohio bred trotter. Now, um, I guess we can start with the story behind them. Uh, one of our clients, Teresa, had sent me a message. had sent me a message and said, uh, Anthony, um, I was wondering if you'd do me a big favor. You don't know me very well. I own 1% of a horse. My husband and I and my son, we have a few horses that we train. And my, my husband's very, very sick in the hospital with COVID. I'm sick with COVID. My son just tested positive. You know, I don't really know what to do. You know, the horses are going to fall behind. That's not a great situation. We can't do a lot. Right? In horse racing, you have barriers. You have financial barriers. You can only do what you can do. But anytime you can offer somebody a helping hand, you know, not many people, if you know me well enough, you know that 
I would do lots for, for anyone. I'm just that type of person, and I was I was raised that way. You know, you're always going to need a hand in this industry or in life in general. And if you can if you can give somebody a helping hand, more times than not, you'll find that reciprocated one way or another down the road. So it's better to say yes than no. If you can. So I said, I don't really know what you want me to do. I you know I don't know these horses very well. Their breeding's okay. Um, I'll, I'll help out if I can. So we ended up taking the horses for Teresa. She kept a piece of them, and I own the, the other 80% of all three of them. Now, we'll list those horses for sale when I can I can give you an honest-to-goodness report on all three. I like the trot in Philly. I trained her today. I thought she was nice. The Indiana Pacer seemed great when he left Mohawk. A little flat today, but I trained him before I left Mo, or before I left Tomiko, uh, before he left Tomiko last week. I thought the horse trained great. And the other one seemed to have some pop, too. Don't ask me who they're by. I can't remember right now. Uh, they're not mainstream sires. But at the same time, they all look like useful horses. So, um, they train today. Del Cash, or, uh, sorry, Gemstone Ruby Rose is the trotter. I'm going to have to send uh, the blacksmith a few little changes to make. This horse is just interfering, but man, she had a lot of pop on the end of it in the straightaway. Got to the turn, boxed herself up. You've heard me talk like this before. Boxed her gate up a little bit, made a break. That's easily fixed, and we'll fix that right away on her. Uh, the two pacers were both flat, but the track was a little... It wasn't great today, but it was certainly trainable. We schooled. Uh, we schooled three horses over that track. Um, I'll get to that in a minute also. So, Gemstone Ruby Rose, I was very happy with her. Uh, Del Breeze and Del Cash both went well. So now, we were supposed to, to school, walk on the moon, and... Um, uh, the other trot and coat, what the hell's his name? Matt's MVP. So Matt's MVP and uh, Walk on the Moon were supposed to school. Now we're getting tight for time. The track isn't great. I said, just go out and jog them on the back track in the jog carts. Come back up. We'll put the head poles and knee boots on them. We'll go out behind the gate and go a mile in 210, 212. I'm going to go with Twin B. Heaven Out. Watch them warm up first trip. He's okay. Looked a little off left hind, but not bad. You know, he's a big colt. Going to be going, to be going through growth spurts, uh, but not bad. So, made a couple of little changes. Uh, Danny, I was talking to Danny there. He said, you know, probably tighten that head pull up, and I added a bit bird to the inside of him. Um, we went out, we went out of there. Twinby having an hour felt good, felt really good. Uh, walk on the moon, got away third in behind uh, Matt's MVP. You know, Matt's MVP, I could hear him hitting the jog cart. He was hitting Matt, uh, Danny's feet in the jog cart going by past the three eights in front of the grandstand. So he popped out of the two hole. I'm like, oh, this isn't going to work out well. Matt's MVP likes to pull up on the front end or used to. I don't know what it'd be like. I let him go. We're at the half and like eight in a bit. He's trotting right along. Now, I could have busted the pair of them up, walk the moon and, and Trimby have an arrow ready to, pretty near ready to go. Um, so we just moved over and, and as Timmy rolled out three deep with Matt with Walk on the Moon, I said, hey, just stay there. Don't dare go by Matt's MVP. I don't want him getting sour. So we just sat right beside him. Matt's MVP finished up good a mile in 212 in the jog cart. Still felt a little floppy, um, but I, I was happy with him. And uh, Twinby having arrow was very, by far the best I've ever seen him. 212, last half and three in a bit, but easily could have went a mile in 25 with the bike. Very happy with him. And Walk on the Moon looked good too. We backed him up, obviously, 212 today. Probably go back with another mile in two trips, maybe a mile in 212 on Saturday. And then we'll qualify him next third now Thursday back Saturday. We'll go a slow mile with him next Tuesday. Uh, maybe a mile and a half or nah, just a mile. We'll go a mile with him and probably 220. And then we'll qualify him once and then qualify him again. So I would suspect... Most of the horses we're getting ready will go with two qualifiers for them until we really get a feel for them. Now, the only bad news of the week, Purple Aura tied up a little bit. Not a little bit. She tied up quite a bit. But she looked comfortable today. She looked happy. Uh, her muscle count was, was pretty high. Um, and we'll get, again, you're dealing with fillies in March with this weather shifting around. It's not shocking. You know, we've been super, super diligent with the Glare AM just on pins and needles every day going with her when, you know, she missed a day or her routine got screwed up a bit or now the track's muddy instead of hard or now it's frozen instead of muddy. 
I, I, it just makes me shiver because I know how bad she can tie up. So Purple Aura tied up. Now the good news is Purple Aura is not generally a tie up horse, so we'll call this an anomaly. But she did tie up. We are working on it, and I'm sure they'll get that that tie up down soon enough in short order. I'll tell you what, I'm a little off the beaten path here. Uh, I was leaving. I wanted to get a pulp before I left. Uh, four and a half hour drive ahead of me. Got a pulp. And right beside Pulp is Pizza Hut. Now, when I was a kid, I, I consumed uh, a shocking amount of pizza. When I, I love pizza. I still do. Um, and uh, it's funny because my wife, she won't eat like hot, 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 hot pizza. Like, she thinks like she acts like burning the roof of her mouth is like getting shot with a gun. It's, it's like life ending. And I told her, I said, burnt my mouth like a million. If you haven't burnt your mouth eating pizza, you're just not eating it right. You're not trying. I burnt my mouth so many times and like the pulp, I, I did today obviously a little bit. Uh, the pulp helps a little bit. But I burnt my mouth so many times, I'm sure the roof of my mouth is going to be growing back by the time I get to the border. <laughs> but I do, uh, I do love pizza and I do love hot pizza and uh, that hit the spot. So we had a great night last night. Uh, Levator was fantastic. We're obviously spitballing ideas. What are we gonna do with Levator next? I didn't expect him to just scream through that class. You know, I thought he did well. We, we you know, week to week, we make some changes and figure out where we're gonna go with him. I didn't expect that last night. Obviously that muddy raining or not, that put a smile on my face. Uh, you know, it looks like he was a tremendous purchase also. For the mile he went, man, that was a, a great mile. So, um, where do we go? The class that he fits next, I just assumed he couldn't do it. Those are, those are tough, tough horses. Um, but looking at what he did last night and trying to look at where he could race, I think there is a class for a couple of wins for him in Ohio. That optional 30 claimer looks like a nice spot for him. And um, I, even Lauren, hey Lauren, she's the best. She was lobbying for, for a spin on Levator and the amateurs. And I said, he's a little grabby, but you know, if push came to shove and we didn't quite have a class for him in Ontario yet. We ran out of classes here. I guess anything's on the table. Um, so Jason, Lauren beat you to the punch. Um, she said, well, I, I can drive to the amateurs. <laughs> Her horse, I guess, popped a splint. He's going to need a week or two. So we'll see how Levator races next week. That class goes on Sunday, but definitely a breath of fresh air. Man, oh man. Um, 55 and three over that track last night. I didn't watch many of the last races and I don't know if there was any, like I saw our three divisions and Mama's race first. I guess I'll get to that in a second. We'll end with Levator. We'll end docking Levator. So Levator was great. Very happy. I believe there's a class next Sunday for him. So a week for sun, from Sunday, Levator will show up again at Northfield Park. Um, Jekyll and Hyde just can't go fast enough. Can't drop 57. I tried to sell him last night to Mark Beckwith, but he didn't. He, he wasn't biting. Um, I think there's a place for this guy somewhere. I just don't know that it's here. So we'll probably end up putting him on. No, I will be putting him on on gate here in the next, I don't know, as soon as I get to stop. Let's call it an hour. Uh, he'll be on on gate this afternoon. He, nice horse. I get nothing wrong with him. He's actually a very nice horse to drive too, but he can't trot 57. I think he would have been a lot happier in Mama's division. You know, somebody said, well, it was muddy and it was this. Okay. Yes. One, she would never beat Levator if they raced all day long. She would never beat him. But she's not supposed to, right? Especially not when you trot in 55. Uh, but I counted like six horses that would give her that would give her a run for her money last night. And I know that there's somebody quietly looking to try and buy Mama Knows Best, but it's going to have to be for the right price. I know I told them 27000 way back when when we had the filly in Harrisburg, and then we rested her, brought her back, and she won. Now, there's a number of ways to look at this. Um, I think the guy that wants her is a show horse guy, so I don't really think he cares about the racing part. I may tell him, listen, you're going to have to wait another week, or maybe we won't, but she's going to find the same classification issues that woes that some of them do. You know, she raced great last night, but she comes first over in Jekyll and Hyde's race. It's it's a different story. It's a different ball game. Um, but listen, I thought she raced great. Take nothing away from her. I like her. I told you guys, I got no problem keeping mom, at least for the time being, because she fits great in that class, right? She's got four wins now, now four parimutuel victories. Now she has to win for the price, which is fine. Her price is 29000 US. So factor in two wins and the price. Or you can look at it the other side of the coin and say, well, 
let's take a, a, a pretty decent chunk of money off the table here and sell her. We can do that. And keep in mind, there, there won't be anything taking place right this second because I haven't talked to the, the person that was fishing around. You can be sure it won't be a dollar less than, than the 27000 if if we do opt to sell her. Um, but that's neither here nor there. It's neither here nor there. The Philly raced good luck. The mayor raced good last night, very happy with her. You know, she's such a treat to drive. And I'm sitting there and Aaron goes, why aren't you, you driving the mayor? And I said, well, Ronnie called in and called off, said he wasn't coming. And either he or the race office put you on. And whatever, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'll sit here and watch her. And it's in the rain, too. So I'm not really that pumped about it. So very happy to see her win last night. So Levator was great. Mama Knows Best was great. The other two, eh. Voyage Vice Empire could do more, and the other guy couldn't. So I'm going to give him top marks ahead of ahead of Voyage for sure. He just frustrates me because he could be a better horse. World's full of, is he going to be better later on in his three-year-old year? Is he going to be a good age horse? I don't know. But right now, today, this second, it's just a horse. So uh, on my way back now, we have uh, racing tonight. we got Captain Mike Dio. Good luck to James and Captain Mike Dio and everybody associated with him. We got some horses qualifying Friday. We got a number of horses training Saturday, and I'm even trying to put together a three-year-old set for you on Drone Day. Now, keep in mind, Resolute Bay is going to Mohawk to train in two six. Harry's been taking his horses over there. I can count five. Let's see if I can get them for you right now. Grace, Garden State Deal, uh, Renegade Gypsy, World for Two, and Tioga Sunshine. There. Those five are the five that are going to be training Saturday morning before the drone. Now, we have to start early because Curtis has to get out of there. So, um, I would say a 7.30 start for the three-year-olds. I'm going to have to get up early on Saturday and get there and get done. But for now, you are all caught up on what took place today. Twin B. Have an Arrow trained great. Um, Walk on the Moon and Matt's MVP both trained great. Very happy with those three and the three horses you're going to be hearing a little bit more about in the future. Del Cash, Del Breeze, and Gemstone Ruby Rose. All three were good. So I'll talk to you soon. I'll continue on my way. I'll be home by supper. Take care.